Everyone, Garrett here from Code the Web. In this video, I wanted to show you guys what I use on a daily basis to make my websites, edit videos, and just do whatever it is that I'm working on. So, let's get started. As you can see behind me, I have an I'm a, well, you probably can't see it, it's an iMac until now, but it is a 27 inch 2011 iMac. It's awesome, it's amazing. I just wiped the hard drive and totally reinstalled everything. It's absolutely incredible. It has a 3.4 gigahertz i7 processor as well as 16 gigs of RAM, uh, one gig of video RAM, and a 1000 gigabyte uh, hard drive, one terabyte. Uh, over here, I have, I don't know what the model is or anything about it really, but it is a Dell external monitor as you can clearly see. And also it flips into vertical um, configuration or whatever you wanna call it. But obviously you can see that. The reason I got it was because I want an external monitor. I love the idea of two monitors. I love sitting at a desk and spreading out and being as organized and productive as possible. So I did get this. I don't use it as like a secondary monitor, say like put my code there because I know like the vertical I like the vertical view is very good for code because you can see much more of it than you can on a horizontal display. I don't do that. I'll really just put, you know, uh, my the image, let's say if I'm working on the actual HTML and CSS process, part of the process and coding that out based on what I made in the design, I will put that up here and I'll put like a to-do list down here or something like that or I'll put like my notes on it or something. And then I still have my code and my uh, actual web browser with the actual design that I'm making on the 27 inch mon uh, iMac. Because it is so big, I am able to do that. So that's pretty awesome. Next, I have a 2013 MacBook Pro Retina. Uh, it's 15 inches. It has also an i7 and 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, the only difference is that it is a solid state hard drive. So it is, while maybe not as powerful as this, it is a lot quicker and a lot snappier than that. So that's pretty awesome. I really love that. I use it mainly when I'm done at my desk or when I don't want to work at my desk anymore. I just want to sit on the couch watching TV, whatever it is, but I still want to be able to be productive. That's when that comes in. So I love it. I've been using it for a long time. All right, so next I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 12.2 inch tablet. I know it's a really long name. They can't just keep it simple like the iPads and whatnot. Uh, actually, when I'd gotten this, it was <coughs> uh, around February or March of last year. And at the time, Apple had not come out with the iPad Pro. Had they done that, I probably would have taken a much more serious look at the iPad Pro or at least considered it a lot more at the time. I really couldn't wait and they didn't end up coming out with the iPad Pro for a while longer. So I had to get that. I actually love it. Um, it's really awesome. They've discontinued the line uh, to the best of my knowledge since then. What I got it for was taking notes in class uh, predominantly. And I'll be honest, I really don't do that that much anymore. But now it kind of gets used as a real tablet when I'm in bed or just, you know, on the on the, the couch or something, don't want to use my computer, which rarely happens. But at any rate, yeah, it kind of gets used much more as a normal tablet now and less so as a notebook slash pro device. All right, so lastly, I have the iPhone 6. Uh, I absolutely love this thing. I know this isn't typical of what you would use to make web to do web design, but there are a lot of great apps on here that can help web developers and web designers. So I've tried to accumulate the best, most of those that I can, at least the ones that I have interest in using. And I do use them like such as Google Analytics, Google AdSense, things like that. They're more website administration apps than they are actual development apps. But nevertheless, they do go a long way and they are pretty helpful. I will show you guys in a minute. All right, so now that you've seen all of my hardware, let's jump on into the computers and I'll show you guys all the software that I use. I'm only gonna show you guys the software from the iMac just because it exactly mirrors what's on my, uh, what's on my MacBook. And except for Photoshop and Illustrator because I, like I, I didn't make a video about this, I was going to, but I wanted to force myself to use Sketch as much as I could because it's a much lighter weight application and I just enjoy it a lot for making um, web design stuff and logos and things like that. So I wanted to force myself to use Sketch because I was kind of not really sure which I liked better before when I had Photoshop. So maybe in the future, I will put Photoshop back on this computer and Illustrator. Uh, but for now, all I have is Sketch, and on that one, uh, the laptop, I have Photoshop. So that's the only difference in the software. But now that I told you guys that, let's jump on in, and I will show you guys everything that I use. Also, I'm not gonna show you the tablet, because again, the tablet and the phone also mirror each other, and they actually mirror each other, not like missing an application or something. Actually, if anything, I probably have more on my phone. So. All right, 
Let's jump on into the computer and I'll show you guys what I got. Guys, let's take a look at the software that I use on my iMac as well as everything that's on my iMac is also on my laptop with the exception of Photoshop. Like I mentioned before, I don't have Photoshop and or Illustrator on my iMac and I'll explain why in a little bit. So first I use Safari, that's my browser of choice. I really did try to switch over to Chrome, but at the end of the day, I'm more comfortable with Safari and I also just like the experience better with Safari. I like the way it looks, I like the way it interacts with the rest of the operating system. And in all honesty, I found that when I was trying to use Chrome, I really did try to switch. I found that it slowed down my computer and it took away from the battery life on my laptop more than I wanted. So I just came back to Safari. Now that said, I do have both Chrome and Firefox on all of my computers and I do test all of the websites that I make with those browsers just to make sure that everything is working properly. Next, I have this app called Wonderlist. It is free, there's also a paid for version. I don't pay for it, I just use the free version. Basically, it's a really cool to-do list app that just allows you to have as many checklists as you want and in there you can have as many to-do or checklist items as you want. You can also share it with someone else that has the app so you guys can collaborate on things. I do that and it works really well. Also, there is an Android version and an iOS version and I also have both of those on my phone and on my tablet so that I can see what I need to do anywhere I go. Next is my code editor of choice, which is Coda 2. I believe the current version is 2.5 point something, whatever. Uh, I've been using this app since it was still in version 1, which was probably about 7 or 8 years ago. I really like it. I've tried all the other ones, Atom and Sublime and whatever else there is, and they're all great apps. Really enjoyed using those apps, but I really just love Coda 2, and so that's why I kind of just stick to it. All right, next is Sketch 3. As I mentioned before, I don't have Photoshop and or Illustrator on this. I don't really do that much with photo editing, so I wanted to try and not put Photoshop on this computer when I erased everything, which was like three weeks ago, and I wanted to see how that would go. So far, so good. If I do need things with Photoshop, I go over to my laptop that does have Photoshop on it, and I use it there. But other than that, Sketch is working out pretty well for me, and I highly recommend the app as well. All right, so these things don't exactly have to do with making websites, really, but if you've ever seen a video that has been recorded on my screen, on my channel, which is kind of all of them, I used ScreenFlow. Great app. Uh, you can also do a lot of really cool video editing in there as well. Next, we have iMovie. I don't really use iMovie up until, like, today or yesterday, and that's because... Um, I never really had a problem since I never really used to record myself in videos and now that I've got the new camera, excuse me, as well as the new microphone, I got a Canon T6i and a Rode VideoGo mic something, which I forgot to mention in the other part of the video that I did earlier. Uh, but I recently got those like a week ago or two weeks ago and so I'm going to start uh, recording myself for the videos more. And part of that means that I have to like put that footage into the computer, obviously, and then join it with the screen flow, uh, screen recording footage. And what I notice is that when I put it into screen flow, everything gets kind of glitchy and laggy and doesn't really work as well as I want it to. It doesn't really flow and play back as well as I want it to. So the only thing I really use iMovie for is to join them together into one video. Um, and for that, it works great. I don't really use it for anything else, but it works well. All right, the last thing I have on my computer here is this app called Classic Color Meter. I think it costs like a dollar or two dollars or something like that on the App Store. Really awesome app. This isn't the only app that will do this, but basically what you do is you open it up and you point your cursor to whatever you want to see the color of on the screen. And then there's a little window that tells you what the color is and you can see the color in like hexadecimal or in RGB or whatever you want to see it in. So that's it for my iMac and I guess also my uh, my laptop as well. Let's jump on over to my phone and I will show you guys the apps that I use on my phone which mainly center around web administration. So let's take a look. Alright guys, here are the apps that I use on my phone to make or to administer my websites. First we've got the WordPress app over on the left. Basically just lets you check in on your WordPress website since I do have a few of those. Let's you see things such as how many views you've gotten, um, what articles have been posted, if people have commented on things, stuff like that. Next, we have the Google Analytics app. Really, really awesome and important app to use if you're a website administrator or want to administer your own website or anything like that. Basically, <clears throat> basically, this is kind of the industry standard for website analytics. So it's really important that you learn how to use that and understand it and utilize it to the best of your ability. In fact, maybe we'll make a tutorial series 
on just that because it is so important. Uh, over on the right, which is the last, but certainly not the least, is called Google AdSense, another Google service. And basically this allows you to put advertisements on your website that other people might um, submit to Google. And it's a great way to make some extra money if you've got a decent amount of people going to your websites. So that's it for what I use on a daily basis to make websites, both hardware and software wise. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what kind of computer you guys use or what software you guys use. Maybe you guys got some recommendations for me or maybe you've learned something in this video that or an app that you want to start using. Also, be sure to follow Code the Web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is the first month in May right here, right now, that I've started consistently planning out and posting everything uh, on there every day. So definitely go check that out and make sure you like and follow. Also, last but not least, definitely uh, subscribe to my new channel. Again, link in the description below. All right, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.